Title, Lock. Year, 2013. Runtime, 85 minutes. Genre, Drama. Cast, Tom Hardy. Director, Stephen Knight. Tagline, No Turning Back. Ivan Locke, a dedicated family man and successful construction manager, receives a phone call on the eve of the biggest challenge of his career that sets in motion a series of events that threaten his carefully cultivated existence. Similarly to films like Carnage and The Wonderful Twelve Angry Men, Locke pretty much takes place within a confined setting. In this case, a building site manager's car journey on the motorway from Brighton to Croydon. In this everyday like journey that he will be sharing with millions of people in the country, he makes a phone call or gets a call every so often. And that's it. That's all that happens in this movie. And it's a beautiful thing. Over the last nine years Ivan Lott has ensured his life is as solid as the concrete he pours. The married father of two has only made one mistake in his relatively normal life. It is this mistake that causes the world around him to crumble. His job. His marriage. And all he can do is keep driving. Keep making phone calls. Keep moving. As Ivan Locke, Tom Hardy, known for his breakthrough blockbuster performances in Bronze Sun, Inception and The Dark Knight Rises, swaps bat wing for BMW and delivers a captivating performance. It's no easy task being the only actor in a movie, but Hardy has proven that he will be able to take on some big challenges after what I consider a very effective performance. The London-born actor achieves more with a single daunting or exasperated expression than others with my whole movie. You could feel the lump in his throat as he explained to his wife that he'd made a baby with another woman. You could see the guilt and genuine what have I done thoughts going through his head. The conversations with his dad in the back seat could have come off as laughable if performed by a lesser actor, but here it was powerful and relatable. I wasn't too sure about the accent at first, I thought he was trying to sound like he was from the subcontinent, but I got used to it. The voice action from the supporting cast, especially Locke's wife, was also top-notch and very believable. Locke's experiences in his life has made him unrelenting in his beliefs that he has too and is doing the right thing that is, driving to the birth of his illegitimate child whilst explaining to his wife on the phone, instead of staying the on-building site on one of the most important days of his company's history. It's really a testament to Hardy's ability that he can make you both empathize and sympathize with a man who has been disloyal to both his family and his company. I really did feel for Locke, all alone and frustrated, without the ability to stop the vastly changing events around him from happening. I also felt for him as a man, because I'm sure a lot of guys have been in similar positions and sincerely regret their actions like Locke. And I sure as hell wouldn't want to be in his position. Director and screenwriter Stephen Knight provides us with fantastically realistic dialogue and character actions, in regards to what they say and how they say it. An example would be when Locke's son uses the discussions of the live football match with his father to mask his sadness over his mother's crying. No son likes to see his mother crying, and he knows something is clearly up but keeps the football front and center to the conversation in order to hide his sadness. By far the most interesting interactions were between Locke and his wife, who is unable to control her shock. If I was forced to name a flaw in the screenplay it would be that it does take quite a coincidence that the woman Locke had sex with goes into labor around the same time that the most important concrete placement in his company's history is about to take place. The pacing is excellent. Huge chunks of dialogue and conversations are split between shots of the motorway and other cars, allowing the audience to ponder on what they have just heard from the characters. It also gives us an opportunity to contemplate just what is going on in the lives of all the people in the other vehicles. Locke is truly a solid example in just how engrossing minimalistic cinema can be. I can't fathom how people could find it boring, other than the fact that they were possibly hoodwinked by explosive marketing I don't know, as I didn't watch a trailer of the film. The movie feels fresh and never outstays its welcome. I guess the ending could have been stretched to show a few events further down the line but that would end up defeating the purpose of the exercise and breaking the tight solid shell the film has. The tension and drama present is nerve-wrecking, without the use of murder or mystery as a plot device. Locke is a film I'm sure every person can relate to in some way, even if it's not by the actions of the characters. It's a movie that's so down-to-earth for once. And who would have thought with a change of car indication from left to right a man so successful could lose his wife, his children, his house and his job, all for the sake of doing the right thing. In my opinion Locke did do the right thing. He could have gone around it better, especially in regards to telling his wife. He should have told her ages ago and in person. However, he made a mistake and as a result needed to suffer the consequences, no matter how hard they were. He had to do the right thing, or the most correct thing possible, now that he had wronged. 
At least he wouldn't put an innocent child in a similar fatherless situation as his dad before him had done. Locke's decisions somewhat make him a man amongst men, not for what he did in the first place, obviously, but because he does not run from his mistakes. In fact, he literally hurtles up the M1 towards them. He doesn't want to cover up, he doesn't want his co-workers' sympathy, he just wants to do the right thing. Whether he did is up to you or me. All in all the movie was an absorbing and concrete drama with enough heart and energy from its main actor to make Locke one of my favorite films of 2013. My rating, 8 out of 10. Final word, engrossing.